In your headlines, car collision on Leeward Highway Sunday evening. Integrity Commission charges three persons. And Grace Bay Beach named as number one in the world for 2022. From the PTV Broadcasting Headquarters in Providenciales, your number one source for news. I'm Erica Pinales, delivering the latest from across the country this Monday newscast right to your door. News Watch starts now. The victim of a one-car collision on Leeward Highway Sunday evening has thankfully and miraculously walked away unscathed after the car she was driving struck a power pole. News Watch has the details. A big blaze erupted after a sedan plummeted into a pole on Leeward Highway near the 7-Eleven and Nell's gift shop. Persons in the area say they heard two loud bangs shortly before 7 p.m. Sunday evening, followed by a big blaze to the power pole that is seen here leaning toward the roadway. The passenger of the vehicle, Newswatch understands, was a young woman who bystanders were able to assist from the vehicle moments before it caught a blaze. She is said to be in good health. Firefighters, police and Fortis linemen were on the scene up until midnight working on the power line and clearing the roadway for safe passage. As the PNP government celebrates its one year in office, Minister of Education, Labor and Customer Service Honorable Rachel Taylor looks back at her year in office. Take a look. The minister gave an update chiefly on the labor, sports and employment portfolios that fall under her ministry. What the ministry has done is establish an ITT for a consultancy team to work with the ministry and the Department of Employment Services to develop a national employment policy and human capital development strategy. This is critical as the completion date is scheduled for the and of April 2022. The Labor Department has also had numerous job fairs throughout the year and successfully has reduced registered unemployment by at least 85%. Minister Taylor, who also has oversight of the National Insurance Board, brought some updates on that portfolio as well. As it relates to National Insurance Board, we have been able to achieve much. The NIB continues to fulfill its mission and has paid over 15 million in benefits this fiscal year up to December 2021. The temporary unemployment benefit would have assisted more than 2,600 people, utilizing 3.9 million of the 4 million fund. The permanent unemployment benefit commences April 1st, 2022. Retirement pension during this fiscal year, the work restrictions were removed for pensioners desirous of assessing their retirement pensions at age 60. And insured persons can now benefit from receiving a salary and their pension at age 60. She also highlighted the work her government has done over the past year to enhance activities targeting at-risk youths through sports. I changed my focus to sports. And we all know that our promise to the people in the people's contract was the launch of Let's Move campaign. And this was launched in January of this year. We promised to introduce new plans and enhance existing programs to save at risk youth. So therefore with sports, we have increased the sports league and the sports camps, despite the COVID-19 challenges that we have been experiencing. And we have invested over 3 million in repairs and development of sports recreational facilities. And this was in an effort to promote safe spaces for our youth. We have had the groundbreaking of the Grand Duke Sports Complex. We have had massive renovations to the National Stadium and is currently taking place. And we have enhanced many of our community parks around the Turks and Caicos Islands. For PTV News Watch, I'm Delana Isles. Don't go anywhere. More news. Watch when we return.
This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotia Bank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to News Watch. The Integrity Commission has charged three persons with offenses of corruption and conspiracy to cause misconduct in public office. The details in this report. Three female immigration officers were last week slapped with corruption and misconduct charges following investigations by the Integrity Commission. The three individuals have since been suspended from duty as a result of the allegations. The commission says one of the three women is a work permit and status card agent. Immigration officer Wendy Seymour was charged on February 23rd at the Choksang police station. Immigration officer Andrea Saunders was charged the next day at the Grand Turk police station. And the third person, Kareen Charait, was charged on the 25th at the Choksang police station. The trio was subsequently bailed and will appear in court in March. Seymour and Charait, who were charged at the Choksang police station, will appear in a Providenciales Magistrates Court on March 22nd, while Saunders will appear in a Grand Turk Magistrates Court on March 10th. The Integrity Commission has not divulged exactly what the charges entail, and they say they have no further comment on the matter at this time. For PTV News Watch, I'm Delana Isles. The unfortunate steady proliferation of illegal firearms and firearm-related crimes in the Turks and Caicos Islands is a major concern to all law-abiding citizens, and the Royal Turks and Caicos Islands Police Force say they have had some measure of success in recovering some of these weapons. The Royal Turks and Caicos Islands Police Force were live on their Facebook page today as they held a press conference to address the new firearm and ammunition amnesty. Present at the press conference were the Deputy Commissioner of Police, Her Excellency Anya Williams as Acting Governor, Deputy Premier Honorable Urban J. Saunders, and members of the Christian Council. We gather that statistical evidence and data from other open sources have clearly supported the fact that too many residents and visitors in the Turks and Caicos Islands have over the years suffered as victims of violent crimes where firearms were used during the commission of these horrific acts against humanity. This unfortunate steady proliferation of illegal firearms and firearm-related crimes in the Turks and Caicos Islands is a major concern to all law-abiding citizens and visitors to our shores. Her Excellency Anya Williams shared her remarks, commending the police force at the press conference for seeing it fit to launch the amnesty program as a part of the community outreach exercise as they continue to work to eradicate crime in the Turks and Caicos Islands. In the press release, the police force stated that we must agree that there are far too many illegal firearms readily available within our communities. As members of this society, we all have a responsibility to do something about it by encouraging persons holding unregistered firearms to do the right thing and surrender these weapons to the police. Her Excellency continued to commend the police force for the initiative of getting closer to the community to give persons the opportunity to surrender illegal firearms without the fear of being charged. The police force shared that they do realize that there may be firearms and ammunition in some households where the owner of the weapon no longer resides in the islands. But because the firearms were held illegally, the current occupants of the house or relatives do not know how to dispose of the firearm or ammunition appropriately. In today's press conference, Her Excellency also revealed that the police force is working closely with the schools in the TCI to implement other youth development programs, which they believe are programs that will force a better relationship between the community and the police force. The acting commissioner of police stated to be pleased to announce that in partnership with Her Excellency the acting governor, the government of the Turks and Caicos Islands, pastors and other stakeholders across the Turks and Caicos Islands, a firearm and ammunition amnesty will commence from Tuesday the 1st of March to Thursday the 31st of March 2022. 
All residents or visitors with an unregistered firearm and or ammunition are encouraged to surrender them to the police during the amnesty. In return, you will not be prosecuted for possession of these illegal weapons during the amnesty period. We've obtained that you can also qualify to claim a voucher value up to $500 for firearms surrendered. Finally, the commissioner stated, quote, You have an opportunity to help remove illegal guns from our communities. Let's together build safer communities across the TCI. Please embrace this opportunity as we work together to reduce the number of illegal firearms in our communities. We all have a duty to play our part, end quote. Don't touch that remote, we'll be right back. Coming up next is your sports authority and weather forecast. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business days for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Last Saturday, the girls gave it their all for the most coveted title in high school softball. It all resulted in the British West Indies Collegiate emerging the victors of the 2022 Interscholastic Softball League and Championship. The Collegiate girls were the favorites going into the final of the tournament that saw them go up against Clement Howell High School. The championship game results were a 28-8 finish to the disappointment of the Clement Howell girls who took home second place for the championship. Wesley Methodist faced off with Margie Basin for third place, but it was the Margie Basin girls who emerged the victors with a 12-18 win. Special awards were handed out to the player with the most runs, Louisa Hedgewald, the team with the best pitcher, Kerne Rigby, and the MVP award presented to Jemiah James, all of whom play for the British West Indies Collegiate. Reporting for your Sports Authority, I'm Ali Carvey. Weather forecast for March 1, 2022. Grand Turk on Tuesday, mostly sunny skies. High 80, low 73. Winds southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Sod Caicos for Tuesday, mostly sunny skies. High 80, low 74. Winds east, southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. North and Middle Caicos on Tuesday, mostly sunny skies. High 81, low 73. Winds southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Parrot and Pine Key on Tuesday, mostly sunny skies. High 80, low 73. Winds southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And on Providenciales on Tuesday, mostly sunny skies. High 80, low 73. Winds southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunrise is at 6, 11 a.m. and sunset at 5, 54 p.m. High tide, 6, 30 a.m. and 6, 55 p.m. Low tides, 12, 09 a.m., 12, 50 p.m. That's it for your weather forecast. We'll be right back with more News Watch. Here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel.
We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We're creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV. We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. Picture a warm, pristine paradise, white sand beaches, turquoise tinged, clear, clear water. And you've got the number one beach in the world for 2022, according to users of TripAdvisor. We bring you the details. The world famous Grace Bay Beach is located on the northeast coast of the island of Providenciales. This pristine beach is the hallmark of the Turks and Caicos Islands and the recipient of many designations, awards, and accolades. Grace Bay currently holds the position of World Travel Awards World Leading Beach Destination and most recently first place in TripAdvisor's World's Best Beaches. Over the previous decade, Grace Bay has taken first or second place in these two competitions 19 times. According to TripAdvisor, if you want the ultimate spot on which to lay down your towel, then head over to Grace Bay Beach in Turks and Caicos, as we've been declared number one in its 2022 Traveler's Choice Best of the Best Awards for Beaches. Our beaches took the top spot in a ranking drawn up from the quality and quantity of reviews and ratings from TripAdvisor travelers for beaches worldwide, gathered between January 1st and December 31st of 2021. Just a few months ago, on December 22nd, 2021, it was announced that the Turks and Caicos Islands was exemplified as winner of multiple categories in the Caribbean Travel Awards and now most recently, the number one beach in the world. Throughout 2021, tourism in the Turks and Caicos Islands flourished thanks to the Tourist Board's strategic marketing and public relations plans, combined with its vigilant TCI-assured protocols and aggressive vaccine campaign, with over 78% of the adult population vaccinated. Public relations efforts have resulted in nearly 1.5 billion media impressions and a corresponding media value of nearly 145 million in 2021. And now, at the beginning of 2022, the Turks and Caicos Islands continues to be a world-class award-winning destination. The CDC has issued new mask-wearing guidelines. After two years of strict face-covering mandates, most Americans can now live mask-free. Here are the details in this next story. New mask guidelines by the CDC is allowing Americans in certain parts of the country to relax their mask wearing mandate where hospitals are not under high strain. The new guidance set forth to assist people to begin to live with the virus and ease back into their normal lives will account for almost 70 percent of the U.S. population in areas considered to be low or medium risk. Persons living in these areas are now given the option to be indoors without masks. In the past, health professionals and heads of countries considered number of cases per area in considering the measures to be introduced. Now, according to the New York Times, officials are considering three Three factors, new COVID hospitalizations, percentage of hospital beds occupied by COVID patients, and coronavirus cases per entire population. This helps heads of countries to determine whether risk is low, medium, or high. The TCI continues to be guided by PAHO, WHO, as well as the CDC. However, there seems to be no indication that the country will eradicate mask-wearing measures in the near future. Although Minister of Health Honorable Jamel Robinson on Thursday did announce an ease back on the mask wearing guidelines. Mask wearing and or face covering will continue to be required indoors and in closed spaces while their use is now recommended for outdoors, particularly when in close proximity to others. This and a number of other measures and updated guidelines come as a result of improvements to COVID-19 cases and hospitalization numbers, which have decreased significantly since the fourth wave in January. 
That brings us to the end of this edition of The Real News. I hate to leave you so soon, but of course, you can join us right back here every weekday at 6.30 p.m. and tap into our social media platforms at www.ptv8tci.com. I'm Erica Pinales, keeping you informed, updated, and affiliated. Until next time.